months ago, E3D teased all about new things coming to the Revo line, and we've got it. Revo High Flow is here. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be talking all about High Flow Revo today. So if that's your kind of thing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. Uh, E3D sent over some awesome boxes here that include Bontech IP. These are the brand new Revo High Flow nozzles, which if you're wondering, did they just kind of take a CHT and a Revo and let them do the dirty? Come up with something? Yeah, that's pretty much what we got here. But you might also be saying, well, Grant, it'd be really complicated to do that. And you're right. It is, and it's not done in one piece. Let's take a look at it here. Now, the big thing to note is that one of these is high flow, the other one isn't. So without actually removing the sock, there's not really a good way to tell unless you look for the seam. High flow Revo is actually a slug that is pressed into a carrier from the Revo system. And this works by enabling this high flow transfer. So we can see the actual slug right here with some chamfered corners, very nice. And we can see that it has what you might consider a bit of an aero spike or something out of the aerospace industry. And it just all fits in and presses together, creating a multi-channel flow design that we are used to from the Bontex CHT. E3D decided that it's better to just work with a company than it is to copy them and not bother with IP. It's funny, who knew that you could get a lot done by just asking people rather than just stealing from them? I'm not looking at all the people that have been stealing Chep's Filament Friday bed leveler. No, no, I'm not pissed off about that at all. Sorry, but we're not gonna turn that into a video. And so you might be asking yourself, well, how did E3D do this with the Bontech patents? Well, E3D licensed it from Bontech. There will be a future blog post coming out from Claire detailing their working together with Bontech and the intellectual property surrounding the CH T nozzle. So stay tuned for that because we're definitely going to cover it. I like this idea of having high flow and I even more like the idea of companies working together and not just keeping intellectual property from helping out a community as a whole. But we can see that as the filament comes in, it goes and splits into multi-channel. Now for high flow Revo, it seems to vary on what size everything is. And I'm assuming that these are just other prototypes for how many of these parts end up in there, but looks like somewhere between four and five actual holes meet up to create this system. And you might be asking yourself, well, Grant, why do we have to split the filament up anyways? Because if you notice, the filament actually gets split up into these individual chambers. That is because when you're running high flow, you have to do this. There's really no way to get the heat all inside of that filament. And if you're not splitting it up, you have to run such high temperatures that this really becomes a monumental pain in the keister to get done. Really high flow comes down to either increasing melt zone or basically increasing the surface area that you can melt filament on. With Super Volcano, which was E3D's previous way of giving you really, really high flow, while it worked great, it was such a long system that barely even striking your part could cause your entire heat break to completely shatter if it was something like titanium. And that's not good for printing. But if you were running a machine that where you needed really high flow, it was great. Just run lots of Z-Hop so you don't end up hurting yourself. With E3D's explorative R&D, they studied how geometry and thermal transfer combine to provide a flow rate. It's one thing to work out what the perfect geometry would look like, but successfully manufacturing that geometry is another thing entirely. To achieve this, they've balanced several trade-offs with fluid dynamics, thermal transfer, manufacturability, and practicality of assembly. That is from E3D themselves. Their solution combines ease of manufacturability and affordability. Now, these nozzles are not cheap, but when you look at other options out there, high flow is a pretty good option. Now, you're not going to get any hardened capability, so you're not going to be running something like a Basel nozzle. And shout out to all the Basel fans that came and brigaded the comments in our last video. Thank you guys for remaining civil, but I'm like, oh God, it's going to get bad, but it didn't. So thanks. You guys are super cool. This is about half the price of a Basel. The thing with the Basel is it's tungsten carbide and makes it abrasion resistant. This, however, 
is not. This system to run high flow through a nozzle by basically breaking the filament up is nothing new. And in fact, there have been ways around the Bontech patent. But I tip my hat to E3D for licensing it rather than doing what other companies have done. Things like finding the exact way to get around it without causing problems like Basel did, or like the Chinese manufacturers of the CHT clones have done, they use a three millimeter nozzle and they put a slug in it that splits the nozzle into three pieces. And as Stefan of CNC Kitchen found out, it actually works as good, if not better than a regular CHT. But now that CHTs are also available in your hardened materials, there become other options. But if you transfer it over to the Revo ecosystem, you can't use any of those nozzles because they're not compatible. And that would be one of the downsides of the Revo system is you're stuck with E3D nozzles. But with that being said, E3D has actually kept these nozzles relatively affordable given the technology and effort that went into making them. At about $40 a piece, while they're not cheap, these will enable you to run high flow materials. And if you are looking to play on the fringe end and want to do it with E3D's Revo system, this is how you start. But something to note here is unlike the Bontech CHT, which is just basically drilled to get those holes, this is a two-piece system. And that two-piece system has some fun challenges involved in it. One of those being, well, how do you keep the two pieces from separating? Now, E3D's engineers have assured me that there really isn't a way to separate these pieces, and they're using some hardcore engineering to make it happen, but hydraulics are kind of an interesting challenge, and I will be curious to see if some really, really high power extruders might be able to push their way through. But for right now, We've tested them a little bit, and uh, they're pretty darn good. We actually got our hands on them at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, or at least the 0.4 millimeter variant, and the all-new 60 watt heater core that we see. And it's it just it looks like a regular heater core, but it has 60 watts on it. And it's nice because that means if you already have the Revo ecosystem and you would like to add high flow Revo above a 0.8, you should look at getting a bigger heater. That way you can run faster temperatures. Because what can happen? is that when you are running those types of speeds and flow rates, you will overpower what a 40 watt heater can do. And uh, you don't wanna find that. High Flow Revo is pretty awesome because it comes in some great sizes all the way down to 0.4 millimeter and up through 1.4 millimeter to give you a massive range. As we can see here, it's a uh, pretty, pretty awesome. I mean, you're looking at an over 50% increase in flow from a 0.4 millimeter nozzle alone from looks to be about 12 to 18. That only goes up as you go up in nozzle sizes. Now, regular Revo goes up to 0.8. High flow goes all the way down to 0.4. So if you do want to look at the Revo ecosystem, you don't need Obsidian because there is not an Obsidian version of this yet. And I have no idea if it is coming soon TM. So don't ask me because I, I, I don't know. We are doing this video coinciding their release. So I'm not going to have a lot of hardcore concrete numbers for you. Keep an eye out for a future video where we do start testing actual real world flow rates on a Prusa Mini because it's the easiest printer that we have to film with a Revo on it. So. But these numbers are pretty staggering. You're looking at somewhere around 35 to 38 cubic millimeters per second with the 1.4 millimeter nozzle. That's spicy. You will really see some benefits of that. And we certainly see it. Take a look. With a Benchy sliced to one millimeter layers, we are down to a 13 minute Benchy. That is astoundingly fast and will result in, well, a pretty ugly Benchy. But if you're doing parts that just need to be strong and don't necessarily need to look good, big freaking nozzles for high flow is a great way to do it. But if you're just looking to print faster, the 0.4 millimeter high flow will see a significant bump in print speed, or something like a Prusa Mini running relatively fast settings. And we will actually be providing all of these profiles to our Patreon. So if you're a member of our Patreon, keep an eye out. These profiles are on their way to you. So for something like a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, which to me is kind of on that edge of, I still want some quality, but still really want to run fast. On a Benchy, you don't see a lot of difference. It's about a one minute difference. And a lot of that comes down to one, accelerations that we can run on a Prusa Mini. You can't run these things too fast. The kinematics just don't allow for it. But on top of that, the Benchy has a lot of fine detail that your minimum layer time 
is going to come and bite you in the butt for. When we move over to something like just a straight box or even further, a cylinder that the thing can just move in a circle, cylinder is more like the exact perfect that you would be looking for for something like this because there's no start and stops for corners. We have a 14 minute cylinder. It's a relatively small cylinder, 40 by 40 by 35 point five or so. When we cut that volumetric flow rate back down to 18, which is where the non-high flow goes, we go from 14 minutes to 18, an increase of over 20%. That's a big deal. And this only gets worse when you start looking at bigger parts. So here's another example, the vase mode rose. Link to that in the description so you guys can take a look at it. This thing is an hour and 15 minutes with your standard 0.8 millimeter nozzle limited to about 18 cubic millimeters a second. When we go up to 28 cubic millimeters a second, which is where high flow should generally land us, we go from an hour and 15 minutes down to an hour and two. That is a 13 minute savings. That's a lot of time that you're saving here because again, that is over 20%. That is a lot of time, especially when you're running something like a production environment. And this should viably have no difference in the way that something looks. There's a huge benefit to this. So I'd love to know what models would you guys like to see in the all new Revo High Flow? We have a 0.4, a 0.8, a one millimeter, and a 1.4. So let me know what you guys would like to see because I'd love to run them. But of course, remember, no obsidians, so no hardened materials at this time. But that would be really cool if we could get a diamond version of this. Because now that they have a slug system where it's an insert, there's no reason you couldn't do something that's high flow. I'm most interested to see what this Benchy looks like. So let's go run some high flow models. An 11 minute benchy, one millimeter thick layers, far from perfect, but that is bone stock settings, 225C on the nozzle. Revo high flow is something crazy, man. Only way we've gotten this close is with the 1.8 millimeter CHT. And that benchy doesn't look nearly this good. Bottom layer's dead flat because of how thick the layers are. A little bit of stringing and the uh, overhangs are not great. Difficult to see, but not great. Interesting that at a certain level, the benchy just doesn't bridge all the way across. It actually leaves a hole for the smokestack. Kind of interesting. Not bad for 11 minutes. And the great thing about the Revo ecosystem is once we have the 60 watt heater installed, which is literally two plugs, it's not even difficult. All we have to do is just unscrew the nozzle and screw the new one in. The biggest thing you're gonna have to keep in mind is what nozzle you're running. And to do that, you can just pull off the sock to see if it is a high flow or not. That's really the only thing that I see here that could be a downside for those new users is that if they forget they don't have high flow in and they slice something for high flow, you're going to have a bad time because there's no way that a regular nozzle can do it. I can't sit here and say that I saw this coming. I knew that E3D was going to be doing a high flow like it, it it's kind of necessary, but I didn't expect them to do something like this. I expected them to just extend the heater core. But what they've done is they've enabled you to just literally unscrew a regular nozzle, screw in high flow, and change nothing. That's the beauty of the Revo system. As long as you torque everything down appropriately and from time to time, make sure those nozzles are still tight so you don't jam your nozzle into your build plate, you have no extra BS when you go and change your nozzles for an E3D Revo. So if you're looking for high flow without any of the BS involved, this is a pretty good way to do it. I do hope that E3D does look at doing some sort of obsidian system for it, but with how delayed obsidian was to begin with, I would bet if there even are talks of an obsidian high flow variant, we're not gonna see that for quite some time. So let me know what you guys think in those comments below of Revo High Flow. I'm excited for it, and we're gonna be converting one of our Purushas behind me in an upcoming live stream to a Revo so that we can use Revo High Flow, but um, there is a Voron Trident on the way that is absolutely going to end up with the Revo High Flow system on it because uh, Voron. 
and Voron speeds. So make sure you get subscribed if that's something that you guys want to see as well. But yeah, send me some models, email them to me, tweet them to us, and we'll run them for an upcoming video where we really do hardcore test these, make sure that they do hit the advertised flow rates because these flow rates, kind of insane. And I just love the geometry in all of this as well. That's all we have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Shout out to the Basel fan boys, girls, I don't know, fan people. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and get subscribed. Massive thank goes out to all of our Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, you can support us financially if you do so choose to. Those links are in that description down below. Right below me will be our first look at the E3D Revo system because, yeah, it's kind of amazing. And while it is not cheap, it's got a lot of value there. And next to that, will be our look at nozzles, which we just did last week. So take a look at that if you haven't seen it yet. We'll see you guys down in those comments and the next one. Take care.